Before we say anything, we need to discuss homeostasis, which is basically the balance or equilibrium that human beings or living organisms have to maintain. And uh, stressors are the uh, stimuli that disturb homeostasis or threaten homeostasis. Uh, the adaptive response is what the organism is doing to, uh, to antagonize the stressor. And stress is the state of threatened homeostasis. So when our organism is under stress, it means that there is a stressor that makes our homeostasis be disturbed. During a stress response, the entire organism participates. However, there is a system which has been called heuristically the stress system uh, that is activated once a stressor has exceeded a, a certain threshold. And that system consists of a brain component and a peripheral component. In the brain, we have the hypothalamic paraventricular nucleus that contains neurons that secrete corticotropin releasing hormone, which then uh, goes through the portal system of the pituitary into the pituitary and stimulates the secretion of ACTH. And then ACTH goes into the systemic circulation and stimulates the secretion of cortisol by the adrenal cortices. On the other hand, there is another center called the locus ceruleus norepinephrine system, which is in the brainstem. And that is the center of the autonomic nervous system, both the adrenomedullary component and the uh, sy systemic sympathetic system. The stress system, when it's activated, can precipitate acute disorders or chronic disorders. Uh, acutely, for example, uh, a stressor can precipitate an asthma attack or a hypertensive episode or a psychotic episode. Now, chronically, things are much more serious because chronic stress can produce basically uh, all the so-called chronic non-communicable disorders, including obesity, metabolic syndrome, diabetes type 2, hypertension, depression, uh, anxiety, uh, and so on. Our vulnerability to stressors depends to a great extent on our genes, so there is genetic vulnerability, and it's a polygenic uh, subject. On the other hand, it depends on epigenetics. In other words, on the effects of the environment uh, on our own uh, genetic material. Prenatal life and early life, especially the first five years of life, are extremely vulnerable periods. That's why they're called critical periods. If you have stress during those times, uh, the stress hormones uh, leave behind an imprint. And it's usually an epigenetic imprint, which uh, accompanies the child for the rest of his or her life into adulthood or old age. Nowadays, in modern societies, uh, most of the stress we are exposed to is social and in a sense, anthropogenic. So the economy is part of uh, social life. If you don't have the economic means to live a normal life and you have to scrounge around and be stressed stress all the time, that's damaging for our organism. So uh, I wouldn't distinguish financial stress from uh, social stress, from peer stress. Uh, they're all uh, damaging through the same mechanism. When uh, you are dealing with stress, you have to do one of two things. You either eliminate the stressor or get away from it, uh, which is a smart move. Let's say you, you're in a job where you feel stressed, change your job. On the other hand, if that cannot be done, then you have to learn how to cope uh, with stress. And uh, there are many ways to do that. It's a learnable uh, process, uh, coping. Of course, you know, very basic in dealing with chronic stress is 
to have a healthy life, meaning to have a good diet, uh, good nutrition, high quality. Second, to exercise regularly. Uh, third, to have good timing in your uh, activities every day. So you should wake up approximately at the same time, um, have breakfast about at the same time, and, and so forth. And fourth, uh, you have to sleep uh, well. Unfortunately, in the last 30 years, we sleep on average two hours less than uh, the duration of sleep of uh, the seventies, for example. And that's stressful for the body. And it alters metabolism. It's very well known, known now. And it damages the blood vessels. It's just what stress is doing to the organism. First of all, we uh, have to get the message out. Uh, second, uh, we have to have uh, social, political changes that would um, guarantee that our children uh, are exposed uh, not to stress, but rather to enriching experiences. That's very, very basic. Um, and third is we all have to learn how to cope with things that uh, we cannot avoid. And uh, so far, uh, it seems that one of the psychiatric or psychological methods that are used quite successfully with stress is the so-called cognitive behavioral therapy.